بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما صدق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم دي أثر عبد الرحمن أخضري رحمة الله عليه after finishing the first chapter of the book or the introduction of the book he is now about to write teachings he teaches us the fiqh of the soul before the fiqh of the physical practices what do i mean by fiqh of the soul is he began the book with this very golden phrase, this very golden sentence, أَوَّلُ مَا يَجِبُ عَلَى الْمُكِلِّذِ تَسْحِحُ إِيمَانِهِ The first application upon the Muslim adults is to correct their Iman, to correct one's Iman. And the way one has to correct their Iman is by going back to the Book of Allah, and to the teachings of Sayyidina Rasulullah By knowing Allah and knowing His Messenger and by believing in Him, in His books, angels, messengers, the life hereafter and Al-Qadr. Right after that, He teaches us something that is the other side of what he is about to teach us today. The first chapter of the book is Faslun Fi Tahara, the section of purification. But purification is of two types. The purification that has to do with our soul. That's why he started with things one has to do and things one cannot do. So he started with telling us that we first of all has to jump into the path of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala by making repentance, and He told us the three conditions of repentance. Another ma'alam al-hat, the need to Allah yaud ila dhabi dima baqiya min umrihi, wa ayatul kal ma'asiyat fi saatiha. And then He came to, um, He counted different qualities that one must have and different qualities that one must avoid. And here He says, "Fasluh bi tahar." Tahara in Arabic means an-nawafa, linguistically, cleanliness. But in the istilah of the people of Sharia, al-tahara to, as the author say, says, al-tahara to qisman, tahara to hadithin, wa tahara to khabithin. He says al-tahara is of two types. Tahara here means purity. Or purification is two types. Tahara to hadathin purification from hadath, wa tahara to khabathin in purification from khabath, which is filth. Hadath is when one breaks one's rituals. You make wudu, and your wudu is broken. That's hadath. You have to make ghusl al-janaba, that's hadath al-akbar. So tahara to hadath is when you make wudu or you make ghusl al-janaba tea. And tahara to khabar is tahara from filth, from najasa, from impurity that is in one's body, clothes, or place of prayer. So we, when we are about to pray, we have to clean ourselves, our bodies, our clothes and our place of, of salah. That is Taharatu Khabas. And he said, Wala yasihul jami'u illa bil ma'i tahirin mutahirin. Purification from both types is not achieved except with pure and purifying water. You have different types of water. There is a pure and purifying water. 
water is of different types. First one, what is the tahara to be ma? We need to be sure in the cinema. If it changes in the scene, to rehab or tahiri in the habit, in the salaha. As Sayyid Ibn Asha Rahmatullahi says. So there is a water that is impure. That's that water you cannot use it in any way. That water that is impure. All you can do with that water is to throw it. That's some alma al najis. And there is a water that is pure, but cannot purify. Meaning you can just use it for the adat, for cooking or for drinking coffee or things like that. But the water that can purify one from both from both hadath and khabath, he says, is a purifying water. That's why I say purification, purification from both types is not achieved except with pure and purified water. And then he said, وَهُوَ الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَغَيَّرْ لَوْنُهُ أَوْ تَعْبُهُ أَوْ رَائِحَتُهُ بِمَا يُفَارِقُهُ غَالِبًا It is like, it's as though we ask him, what is that purifying water? How does it look like? He said, it is water that has not changed in either its color, Test or smell, or I'm sorry, or smell, by something that is not normally a part of it. A water that has not changed in either its color. The color of the water hasn't changed. The smell hasn't changed. The taste hasn't changed. It is not changed by what? By something that is not normally a part of it. If what changed the water is something that lives with the water, then that water is still considered as pure and purified. But if what changes the water is something that is normally not, is normally part of, is normally not part of the water, uh, then that water cannot be used to make wudu or to make usul janaba. It is not a purifying water. It can be pure, and he gives he gives examples. Kazait. Such as oil, is oil pure? Oil, is it pure, Muhammad? It's pure, right? Because we can eat it. We can we can put it in our food and eat it. It's, but if it changes water, the water is still pure, but it's not purifying because oil is not something that is normally with water. It is something that is normally, you know, apart from water. What's some fact? It's pure, but if it changes the water, the water is not purified. It's still pure, but not purified. What does it mean? Kulli and grace, he says. What water he grind? You know, what sabun? Soap. Soap is 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 is, is so pure. It is. It's a, it's it's a clean. It's a pure. We even use our we even use soap to clean ourselves. But if it that if it does change the smell or the color. Or the test of the water, this water cannot make wudu anymore. It cannot make ghusl of janaba anymore. Or ghusl al anymore. What was that in filth? Is filth pure? Filth. Is it pure? No. Filth is filth. Some filth is broken. For example, dirt. When he means by filth, he dirt. The dirt that is in your body is pure. You know? When you, when you use the purity, the linguistic meaning of tahara, which is nawafa, then filth is not pure. But when you use the etymological meaning of tahara, dirt is pure. But if this dirt that is on you or anywhere changes the color of the water, or the smell of the water, or the um, taste of the water, the water is still pure. You can use it to maybe do some things, clean your assets or things like that. But you cannot use this word eh, to make wudu. Because this is something that is normally not part of, of water. And the life, the list goes on. Everything that is not normally part of the water, that is not normally living with water, if it changes the water, the water is not going to be used for wudu or for usl. Then he comes to tell us that there are things that can change the water, yet the water is pure and purified. 
That's why he said, Wala ba'sa bit turabi, wal ham'ati, wal sabakhati, wal ajuri, wa nahwihi. There is no harm. You see, you see, there is no harm with, with, with turab, with death. Turab, like if the water stays in the, in the sand, and the water becomes sandy because of where it stays, that doesn't harm. Because the tagayar al ma'u bin mujawarat. What hamati or mud, mud, if the water that stays in the mud takes the color of the mud. It doesn't harm. It is pure and purified. Was sabakati or salt, the water that stays that lives in a salty place, you know. So because of that, the water is now salty. That doesn't harm because it is because of where the water lives. You cannot separate them. And he said, well, ajuri and plaster. So anything that changes the water because the water lives with them. Or because the water, for example, what is called tohlu, where the water stays somewhere for so long, the water starts changing itself because of tulul muqth. That water is still pure and purified. Or something that is next to the water but did not mix to the water. For example, I have perfume here and I have water here. You see, if I have perfume in the water, and the perfume changes the, the taste or the smell or the color, the water is pure but it's not purified. But if the perfume is next to the water, because of their neighboring, neighboring, the perfume changes the smell, the water is still pure and purified. That's something very interesting. If they mix, yes, but if they are just next to each other, the change does not, you know, harm here. And he said, first noon, إذا تعينت النجاسة غسل محلها فإن التبس غسل الثوب كله ومن شك في إصابة النجاسة نضح وإن أصابه شيء في نجاسته فلا نضح عليه And he said, ومن تذكر النجاسة وهو في الصلاة قطع إلا أن يخاف خروج الوقت ومن صلى بها ناسيا وتذكر بعد السلام أعاد في الوقت Here he talks about four different things. Inshallah, we're gonna go over them very quick, uh, very, very quickly. He says, "Ida ta'ayyanat al-najasatu, wusila mahalluha." If the spot where an impurity najasa affects is known, that place is washed. I have a clothes. I have najasa, I have some uh, impurity on my clothes or on my body, and I know the very place where the najasa is. All I have to do is just to go and wash it. But the second thing is this. For any tabasat, if the place is not known, I know that there is najasa, there is impurity in my body, somewhere in my body, or somewhere in my clothes, but I don't know where, what part. All I know is there was a najasa here that touches, that is, that there is impurity in my clothes, but I don't know this part. What should I do? He said, Ghusila thawbu kullu, the entire garment. Is to wash. Is washed. I must now wash the entire garment because I don't know where it is. All I know is there is Najas. That's the second case. The third case. Woman shakka fi isabatin najasati nabaha. If one is in doubt about whether an impurity has affected an area, he must sprinkle water on that area. You know, I know that this very thing here is blood. But I'm I'm doubting whether the blood touches my 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 uh, an area of my clothes or not. He says I just get some water and sprinkle it. You know, just to be sure. That is when I am doubting whether the najasa, which I know this is najasa, this impurity, has touched my a part a part of my body or my uh, my 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 clothes. And then he said, وَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ شَيْءٌ This is very interesting. وَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ شَيْءٌ شَكَّ فِي نَجَاسَتِهِ فَلَا نَدْحَ عَلَيْهِ If one is affected by something that he is unsure whether or not it is an impurity, he does not have to sprinkle water. I just passed by some place, 
something, you know, drop on me. You know, I don't know if it's water or if it's a urine. I know that something has touched my body or my soul. But I'm not sure whether it is Najasa or it's not. What should I do? You should not do anything. Because everything is pure until it is proven to be impure. That's, a, that's, that's the, the, the rule. Everything is pure until it is proven to be impure. So if, if you cannot prove that it is not impure, then you cannot consider it. You know? So that, that, that you apply it everywhere. You see some, you know, some, some, something red on your clothes. You don't know whether it is blood or it is ink. You don't have to do anything. It is not considered najasa because al aslu bil ashiyai al tahara wal yaqinu la yuzalu bi shakki. Certainty is not to be removed by doubt. And the last thing, so here, and the last thing he is saying here, he says, "Woman tadakkar al najasa ta, wa huwa fi salati qata'a illa an yakhaf khuruj al waqti." If one remembers an impurity during a prayer, he must cut it off unless he fears losing the prayer time. I'm praying. In the middle of prayer, I remember that, oh, there's najasa, there's impurity in the clothes that I'm wearing now. What should I do? I have to cut off the prayer. Because I cannot pray without, uh, without pure, with, with najasa, with, with impurity. It's one of the conditions of prayer to be valid. To be valid. And he said, except unless he fears losing, he fears losing the prayer time. Meaning, it's all, I'm praying Asr, and it's almost Maghrib. If I cut the prayer and go remove the Najasa, by the time I come back, the sun will set. What should I do? He said, you should continue the prayer. Because praying on time is uh, given precedence here. I don't know if you get me. You get it? Alhamdulillah. And the last thing he says, a woman salla biha nasiyan wa tadhakkara ba'd as-salami a'ada bil waqti. If one prays with an impurity out of forgetfulness and remembers after the salam, after the prayer has is finished, after the salam of the prayer, he should repeat the prayer if the time is still, is still in. He should repeat the prayer. He doesn't say he must. What did he say? He, he should. That it means it's not an application. If I know that this is najasa before I go to salah, if I don't remove it, my salah is not good. It's not valid. If I remember najasa inside the salah, and I have enough time before the, the time passes, the time of that particular salah, and I continue, my salah is not valid. But if I forget that there is najasa in my clothes until I finish the prayer, and the moment I say, when I say salam, right after I say salam alaikum, I say, oh, I forgot there was najasa, there was impurity in my body. Now it is recommended that you repeat the prayer if time is still on. If time passed, you're not recommended anymore. Meaning, when I finish the asr, I remember that, oh, I had najasa when I was praying Asr, but that time now is Maghrib time. I'm not asked to go back and pray the Asr. But if the Asr is still going on, I am recommended, not commanded, to go pray. So we learned here basically four things. One is that I know that there is najasa, there is impurity in my clothes, and I know where I go and worship. Two, I know that there is impurity in my clothes, but I don't know in what spot. I have to wash everything. Three, something, I mean, there is a najasa that I see, and I'm doubting whether the najasa touches me or not. Whether it touched, it, 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 um, it got my, into my clothes or not. What should I do is just get, sprinkle some water on the, that red spot. Or, the last thing, I got, uh, something got into my clothes. I don't know whether there, it's najasa or no. What should I do? Nothing. Nothing. Because things 
are originally pure. And they cannot leave their state of, of purity unless something sure comes to take it off. Until proven that it is impure. And then the last three things we uh, learn is someone who knows that there is Dajasa in their clothes. And they did forget. They did forget until they are into the prayer. Then they remember that there is impurity in the body, in the in the clothes or in the body. What should I do? I'm off. I cut off the prayer. I remember that there is Najasa in me, I cut the prayer. If time permits. But if I know if I cut the prayer, by the time I remove it, time will go will pass. I continue the prayer. Or now I know that there is Najasa in my clothes. But I still went and make my I wish I still go and do prayer. With the knowing that Najasa is there. What, 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 is the Salah valid? No, no, it's not valid. Now the last thing, I know there is Najasa in my clothes. But by the time I go to pray, until I finish the prayer, it's, that's a recommendation. If time, if time, stay, I mean, from it. If the time has passed, then I have to do nothing. Hada wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammadin.